Hey, good morning. It's Monday morning, August the 16th here at Always in Stitches in Noblesville. Boy, did we have a great weekend. We sold machines like crazy. People are learning how to sew and they want good machines and this is the place to get them. I just love my little machine here. Uh, it's nothing fancy, but it's a it's the Janome, and they just came out with an anniversary edition. I don't think it's the same model, but it's pink. It's pink. And it's adorable. Pink. You need to come in and see it, especially if you're thinking about getting a, a, a sewing machine for somebody for Christmas. We just got our big Christmas load of uh, sewing machines in, so that was exciting. But today I want to show you a couple things and then we'll, we'll sew something. But uh, you know how I always uh, get a line on my sewing machine that has my needle line so I know exactly where my needle line is and then a quarter inch over this way so that I know where my quarter inch line is. Well, that's for when I have my machine in my cabinet. But now when I have, when I go to a retreat or something like that, or if I don't have a cab, if I wouldn't have a cabinet, this came with my sew machine. I mean, this nice little sew machine came with this nice little table. How awesome is that? Well, we just got these in. They may not be new to you, but they're new to me. And what it is, it's a seam so easy. And it comes with these little, uh, I'm going to call them vinyl non-sticky feet, I mean, grippy feet. They are sticky. And I don't know why I said non-sticky. <laughs> but you know what I understood? It. They're sticky because you don't want them to move, you don't want it to scoot around. <laughs> oh, That's it's Monday. crazy. And what you do is, you know, if you've just got this little bit of an area, look at that. Ooh, what a handy up, tool. It fits in there and then you take your nice blue tape or some uh, low tack tape like washi tape or something like that. Something removable, you know. And you just tape it down. You line that up, of course, with your uh, feed doll, I mean, with your needle line and all that. Your foot plate. Your so foot plate, feet, thank you. Feed dogs can peek through there. This yeah. is a hole. I yeah, this is see. a hole. So make sure that your That's feed dogs are not underneath. See, I can see it. There you go. There you go, that way. See, Ooh, that's not, that's, that wasn't a good finger to Probably not. poke up through there. there. You go. Okay. okay, so then you just do that, and then you've got your line right there for you. The same that's line. That's very cool. Isn't that awesome? So you line this up with your needle. You line this up with your quarter inch, and then there's a quarter inch on this side, and it's just really mm, handy for when you travel. I love that. Or even if you don't travel, and you don't have a big wide long surface look you slide that under you make sure that the hole is beyond your feed dogs let me get my poker out here this is the end of the hole right there my feed dogs in just a hair beyond the uh for that and since i already have my lines of course i don't have to get my ruler out but look at this that's slick isn't that nice? Mm. And it just sits there and you can just run your things right through. And I just think that's the bee's knees. That's very cool. And it's shaped like a flower, so it's kind of pretty it's too. It's pretty and fun. I might have to take my markers and color the flower petals. Oh, that, that would be pretty. <laughs> that would be fun. You think your markers would stick to that? Well, I, I, I think you'd Some have to do it on the back side. Markers? Do them on the back side, maybe? Oh, yeah, yeah, because you don't want your fabric right. rubbing the yeah. color off. Oh, that's such a good idea, Cappy. Well, yeah. I got to bling it. we have you around. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I got to bling it up. If it's got something, I'm going to bling it. Okay, so there's that. And then we were having staff meeting this morning. And do I ever pay attention at staff meeting? Well, I try to, <laughs> but I, my attention spans like a gnat. I was looking around and I found this. I have not seen this before in the shop. But uh, Friday, there was a lady in and we were uh, talking and she says, you know, I just have the hardest time putting fabrics together. It's so much easier now than it was in the 70s and 80s because now the designers, you know, they make a whole collection that goes together. So it's not as hard as it used to be. 
But this little guide is so awesome. It starts out, and it's pocket size. I like that. You can carry mm -hmm. it in your purse, you know. And it's got, what is the fabric grain? Tells you a little bit about that. Let's go shopping. Oh, nobody needs to have a book to tell you how to do that. I don't know what that's about. A few words about quality. The quality of your fabric. Three keys to successful fabric selection. And that's the part I thought was so interesting. Look, it's just a little miniature version of a color um, lesson for your um, fabrics. And then it talks about value, the lights and the darks. And it talks about the character of the print, big, small, plaid, directional, you know, all those things to consider. And then here is feathers and paisleys, stripes. How do you work all that into a quilt? And then it goes on and has some tips here and then add some sparkle. Everybody needs a little bit of that punch mm -hmm. in their quilt to look at. So that tells you about how to add some sparkle if you want to. And then alternate strategies for choosing fabrics. Look at this beautiful scrappy. Now I know some people just can't do scrappy. I have a girlfriend and I have challenged her 150,000 times to just take some fabric, put it in a bag, pull the fabric out, and make a block. Oh, she can't do that. Makes her a nervous wreck, gives her hives. It's just a, a disaster. She just can't do it. Me? Ooh, that's my favorite thing. Random, random, random. Random, yeah. Character and style of an era. So if you're talking about reproduction fabrics, this is a little bitty uh, info about that. Caring for your fabric. Do you pre-wash or don't you pre-wash? This little book gives you all the options, tells you why uh, some people do it one way and some people do it the other. Tips for fabric laundry day. How to store your fabric. This is a bunch of it is good a great information. It's done by, uh, what's her name? Oh, um, Anderson. Yeah, Alex Anderson. Alex Anderson, that's it. And it's put out by C&T Publishing. It's seven ninety nine, dollars and it's a wealth of information. She's I a sharp just, cookie. Yeah, she is. And I just think I might have to have one of these. And what a great stocking stuffer. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say, what a great little gift. Or for a like a quilt Secret guild. Secret sister. Mm -hmm. Quilt I'm guild. telling you what, I uh, this is a little jewel that's hidden in this quilt shop that nobody knows about. Yeah. But well, now they do. Now they do. Now they do. <laughs> and unlike some other things we've tried to get available that aren't in stock, this is in stock. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> some, we have some these. unmentionable things, unmentionable things that start with the letter clapper. Uh huh. Clapper. Right. <laughs> we don't talk about it. Right. We don't talk about it. <laughs> we can't get them. So anyway, this weekend I was making four patches. I have to only make like three hundred and ninety of them, oh and they're scrappy, um, but uh, they're not real scrappy. Each one is different, but. Uh, there's multiples, and I know that didn't make any sense. But <laughs> I kind of wanted to show you a little bit of a strategy about making a four patch and a nine patch. So I've got some strips cut over here. Cut me some strips. I've got some light strip there, and I got me some contrasting. Now, if you don't know what that means, here's a mm, little book that'll tell book. you about it. But anyway, this, uh, you know, you can tell the difference. If I had another really, really light pink fabric or something very close to that, it wouldn't show up as good. So I want something that's going to show up. So I start out, if I need a, if it says in my pattern to cut one and a, a half inch squares, instead of cutting a billion squares, I just cut a strip. What's what I'm gonna do? We're just gonna sew that strip together. It's gonna be amazing. Now this is real basic, you know what? But we've got a lot of new basic quilters watching our channel. And I just wanted to show this little tip. Probably everybody knows it that has been sewing for a while. Now, when we did our last video, you had your walking foot on. 
I and did. And it sounds so much quieter today. It's yes, amazing yes, the difference. Yes, because the, the clicking, because the little handle goes over this needle bar, it clicks when it comes mm -hmm. up and down. It goes up and down. But, but it, yeah, this, is, sure this is a nice mach little machine. So it doesn't matter if you're, actually, if you're making um, scrappy ones, uh, the shorter the lengths of things, the more variety you can get. But they don't have to be the same size. See that? Now, usually I press open, right? You know me. I'm an open presser. But for this, I'm going to press to the dark. And when I press to the dark, I just kind of push with the edge of my iron. I'm not really ironing, okay? I'm just pushing that seam over to one side. See that? And if I go like this, and fabric has been uh, folded over and I get more fabric, I know I haven't pressed it very well. I want that to be real tight, right up against the seam like that flat 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 and then i put my clapper on there to get it some the clapper that we shall not be about. named we shall not talk about and then look at how nice that seam is pressed down then i'm going to go over here to my cutter my cutting mat now since my strips were cut one and a half inches i'm going to cut one and a half inch segments out of my little strip piece here. I'm going to start by straightening my edge. And I'm going to use my seam and this edge and this edge and everything should be horizontal and match up with lines on the ruler. I'm just going to take off a little slice. See that? A little slice. It's like we're in the kitchen. Slice and dice. <laughs> it's like I'm trying to sell you one of those Ginzu knives or something. You're Julia Child. Ju oh, Julia Child. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to cut little segments that are one and a half. And again, I'm lining everything up. Lining, lining. Making sure it's all square and yummy. So now you're strip is really nice and flat and straight uh -huh, and even. Yes. I've sewn these in the past. Yes. And had them come out wiggly and wobbly and uneven. Yeah, yeah. What am I doing wrong? Well, it could be that your tension on your uh, thread is not good. Okay. That makes wobbly, wiggly uh, seams. It may be that you're not doing a consistent quarter inch. That could be. Uh, it may be that your feed dogs and your foot are not putting the fabric through at the same time. That would be a problem. Um, of course, you know, the clapper helps, but yeah. I'm not going to mention it. No, we don't talk about clapper. Uh, so anyway, what you want to do is when you cut these segments, you want to... Now, even though I have been... And I don't know oh, why see, this perfect. happens. I don't either, but it I don't, does. But it happens all the time, but I was hoping it would happen here. You can see that when I put my uh, straight lines on the ends, I no longer have a straight line here. Look at how much mm -hmm. bigger it is mm -hmm. here than it is down there. Even though every time I've done it, and these have come out exactly the way I want them, this one is going to be off. So I'm going to move it over a little bit. And then I'm going to flip it around. And it's just, it, I don't know, is it the know. universe? <laughs> it's a question that just cannot be answered. And it happens to everybody. Now, see, to square that up, I've got to cut that little bitty mm -hmm. fringe off. And I have to do that about every three or four yeah. of them. And it's just the way life is. So when I am um, making allowances for how much fabric I want to use, I always add a couple inches just because it gives me a little extra um I'm for, glad for those. I'm glad you had that mistake because that well, has, it's it happens it's it's, it's what really, happens to me. It's just what happens. Yeah. It happens to everybody. It's just 
I don't know because the fabric is a non, I mean, it's a flexible, mm -hmm. movable thing. And it just, that's the tendency of it. Mine so anyway, so I've got me some cute little segments here. They're so now let's, cute. Yeah, aren't they? Now let's come back over to the machine. And this is where the fun begins. <clears throat> because now, with just that little bit of effort, I can make... Na, 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 na. Yeah, four patches, and with just that one little strip, I got four four patches. How fun is that? Now, isn't that fun? Now, because I uh, pressed my seam to the dark, look what happens when I put those seams together. They lock into each other. How awesome is that? Perfect point. Yeah, perfect seams, perfect whatever. And so I'm going to put a pin there because I'm a pinner. If you're not a pinner, that's okay. You don't have to be a pinner. Put that on my machine. Make sure that that's even. No judgment here. No. And look at this. It's going to be gonna just... Awesome, right there. <gasps> now, what am I going to do with this seam? Oh. Yes, I'm going to press it open. Oh, okay? you're not going to do the twirl? No, I'm not going to do the twirl. No, I'm not a fan of the twirl because you're I not? think it, weak it weakens the middle seam. Oh, okay. That's okay? a good point. Because when you do the twirl, you loosen up this uh, joint. You take those threads out and mm -hmm. it kind of twists on you. I'm not a fan of that, and when I press my seam open, mm -hmm. it still reduces the bulk enough. It reduces the bulk enough, and you got your clapper to yeah. uh, flatten it down. Yeah, that's... And look, there's no big lump there. See? No, it's Lays nice and just flat. as flat as can be. So I don't need to do that twirl thing. Even though I know some people like it, and that's just fine. So now that is my four patch. How nice and basic is that? But you would be amazed if you look, if you've got a collection of sewing books, or if you come into the store and you look at our, some of our sewing books, you'd be amazed at how many quilts are based on a four patch. It's a basic uh, fundamental block, but you can do some of the most beautiful things, especially if you're adding a half square triangles to them mm -hmm. and all kinds I mean it's just amazing what you can do with a four patch now let's do the nine patch on the same principle okay now for a nine patch you need three lights and three uh, contrasting or darks in this case because there's only two and we're going to do the same thing and I always like to sew with my light on the top, but because my dark is the, the smaller of the one, I want to be able to see when to stop. So I'm going to put my dark on the top. It doesn't really matter. I just have always, my whole career of sewing, have put the light on the top. Um, I don't know why. It helps me organize. You know, mm. when, I'm, when I'm organizing my stuff, if I know... If I'm making 200 blocks and they're all, they all have to be the same, I know if I always put that light on the top, I know those will always be the same. They'll always go the same direction. You see how uh, that would work for me? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I have to put the light on the top because I can see it with, against the dark on the bottom yeah, that's <laughs> when I'm sewing through the, yeah, that's the foot. But yeah, that's, I never thought about that part. That's a great idea. Okay, there's one. It's amazing how much quilters can learn from other quilters. Uh, it you is. know, it's it, constant. And you know, we had a group of cross stitchers in here Friday because it was World Cross Stitch Day. Oh my goodness, we had so oh, much fun. Oh, they were a hoot. And they just learned so much from each other that, you know, you think, you think, oh, I've been quilting for 20 years, 25 years, 30 years. What else is there to learn? Well, let me mm. tell you, there is stuff to learn. Every day. I learn stuff all the time. And you know that now that we have the YouTube, 
Oh, it's all out there. Yeah. I mean, if something new comes along, it's on the tube. <laughs> the YouTube. There's also some garbage out there. Well, yeah, yeah. You gotta be you, discerning. You gotta filter. <laughs> You know, but not on this channel. We don't oh, no, no, no. on our channel. No, we're the best. We're the fun channel. So anyway, um, so there's two. And if I wanted to make these scrappy, see, I could have the same light and I could change out my uh, different darks. I could have different darks. I could have different lights too. Oh, well, yeah, that's the scrappiness of it. That's yeah. what's so fun. Yeah. But yeah. some people can't do it. That's okay. We love them. That's okay. Well, you can love them. I think they're weird. <laughs> weird people! No, I don't. I'm, silly. I'm being silly. I, yeah. uh, I think to each his own. You know, those people who sew with that Tula and that K-Facet hey, fabric. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, which Cappy is one of them. Uh, those people, I don't know. Because I like Civil War. So anyway, I'm going to come back over to my ironing surface here. I'm not going to use my clapper because I'm just going to press to the dark. And when I press to the dark, I like to set my seam. Mm -hmm. Now this is what it means to set your seam. What you're doing is you're just heating that fabric up and you're heating that uh, thread up so that it makes it easier for that seam to fold right over. Yeah, and you know what? You're using the iron to make the fold, not pulling the fabric. Right, I'm not pulling the fabric. Right. I'm making the edge of my iron. Pushes it. Pushes it out. Yeah, that's that's key. It, it is key. Because sometimes, let me just iron one a little wacky. Let's do it. Let's okay? do it. Ooh, just so you let's can just, see, yeah, let's what, see uh, what I'm talking the about. The problems. Yeah. Let's show the problems. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of hard to do. Yep, there it is. See that? that fold. See, okay. that's where it's folded, but look. I've got another eighth of an inch under there that this block would have been shorter. It will be, yeah. It'll than this. It look, look! Look at how much shorter it is. You won't get your point. No, you won't get it because it won't, it won't now uh, can we fix it? puzzle together. We can because we didn't put the clapper on it, for one thing. If we needed to, we could come back with some uh, starch or some steam. Best press, flat. Yeah, best press. Get it wet with that. Yeah, here's and some best it press. And re uh, repress it. Repress it. <laughs> now, you know, you were talking about wavies and lumpities. Yeah. Pressing is another thing that can make your strip go crooked if you're not pressing correctly. So if you're ironing back and forth, back and forth like that, that'll stretch your fabric out. It's you not, don't want that. It's not like pressing a garment. It's it's correct. It's, that's ironing. It's not like ironing curtains. No, it's not like it's not like ironing. That's or your pressing. bed sheets. Now our pastor's wife used to iron her husband's underwear. I don't know oh, why I know that. My mom, my mom ironed. I mean, I think if I'd have stood still long enough, she'd iron me. Really? I'm not kidding. She, my mom, back in ironed, those days. Oh, she ironed everything. I can remember her standing at the iron for hours, and it was like, what so I bought ways. all knits forever. Yeah, what a way. <laughs> I didn't iron till I quilted. Then I had to start ironing. Okay, now let's come back over. Oh, Cappy, you know what I did? I should have left one of these apart. Well, this is a good opportunity to show you how to seam rip. Yeah, there you go. Rip it, rip it, rip it. I'm going to repress it back down. Make it flat if again. If I have to uh, seam rip, I don't leave that fold in mm -hmm. my, uh, I don't leave that crease in my fabric. I will flatten it back out. It makes it much easier to rip. That's called frogging it, right? Right, frogging. Rip it, rip it, rip it, rip it, rip it, rip it, rip it. And again, I'm just going to lay my... Free joke. See my red dot there? That's a little nubbin on there. I'm going to get it started first. Yeah. This kind of shocks people when they don't realize you can do it. Yeah. Way. It's like, what? Yeah, I'm going to get this started first. And I just lay that along there, and I make sure it's nice and flat. Now, have I ever ripped fabric? Yes, I have, but I go slow, 
And if I feel it getting caught up, I stop because sometimes the thread, look at that, the thread will get all bunched up and I kind of have to put that nest aside because my blade's not sharp enough to go through all that nest. But look at that. That is that is like the ripping dream. You don't have to pull every But you know stitch. what? You got to have a good seam ripper. Mm -hmm. you do. Not a cheapie. Nope, nope. Okay? Get a good one. You got to have one that's sharp. And you know what? They're just like needles. They just like dull. rotary blades. They get dull. Mm -hmm. So always make sure that you have a nice, good seam ripper. And there's no way to sharpen them. It's just disposable. Right, you right, buy a new right. One. They're not that expensive. No, no, no. And if it so, saves me time. Right. And then I'm just going to gently get rid of my threads. I don't want to throw them on the floor. I'm going to throw them here in my little basket. And then here's my light one. Now, the reason I should have saved these out was because... We're gonna make one of our nine patch segments dark. And when I say dark, that means I'm gonna have two dark pieces. It's gonna look like that. And then I'm gonna have a light one. And it's gonna have two light pieces. So this is my dark section. <laughs> this is my light section. You. Okay? So let's go back and sew those. Who would have thought making nine patches would be so fun? And again, the nine patch is a very basic, very basic uh, block that you can do a thousand things with. I mean, there's books called I Love the Nine Patch, and it's just nothing but quilts made with a nine patch. I don't know if we have that book in stock or not, but if we don't, we can certainly order it for you. I love the nine patch. I love the churn dash. I love the log cabin. You know, there's all those books out there. So you make, now see, I put my dark on the top. Now I can't, <laughs> I can kind of see through it there. That's the end. Okay. So we've got a light, dark light, and uh -huh. then we're going to have a dark, light dark right gotcha and i just refer to them as my dark side and my light side <laughs> uh, my dark uh strip and my light strip because the one has two darks and the other one has two lights well, i've been blessed to work with you the last year or so and there's no dark in your world you're the no lightest darks. person no darks <laughs> War fabric. It isn't all dark. No. But compared to your uh, <laughs> to the pink, it's a little dull. Yeah. Yeah. It always makes me laugh when when Kay Facet will talk about his light colors and his dark colors. Uh -huh. I'm like, there. Are no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. So now I'm going to press to the dark. So that means both of these will be pressed to the dark. That's kind of a trick. So I'm Again, I'm just coming into it from the edge. I'm not really uh, pulling anything. I'm making my iron do all the work for me. Yeah, you're not really pushing. Are you putting no. a lot of pressure on the iron no, too? No, not a lot. No, the iron does the work. Okay, now I'm going to press this one to the dark. This edge of the iron, it does the work. There's no need to put pressure on the iron. The iron's heavy enough. I mean, I suppose if I was using a travel iron, something lightweight. Yeah, between the heat and the pressure of the iron, yeah, you've got strength. Okay. So now you can see I've got a light strip and a dark strip. Let's come over here and subcut. And again, since my strips were one and a half, if my strips had been two inches, two, 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 I would be cutting my segments into two inches. Because my strips were one and a half, I'm cutting my uh, segments one and a half. 
So keep that in mind. I'm going to straighten the edge first. You could really use this to make any size block you wanted. Oh, definitely. You just start out with whatever strip size. Add them together. Take away your seam allowance. Add them together. Put a seam allowance back in, and that would be the finished size or the uh, size that you would be cutting, be making. So let's say I've had two inch, two, four, six and a half inches would be what my unfinished size would be. Okay. Now, depending on whether you're making dark nine patches or light nine patches depends upon how many of these strips that you make because it takes less of whatever you put in the middle because if you're making dark ones it takes two dark ones and one light one and if you're making light ones, it takes two light ones and one dark one. So I'm going to cut three segments so you can see what I'm talking about. And, I mean, it's just this quick. I mean, you could get a quilt done. I'm not going to say in a day. <laughs> not when it's three and a half inches unfinished. Yeah, but if you made them bigger. Yeah. Yeah, true. Come nothing, on over. nothing breaking that rule. Come back to the machine. Now see what I've got here. I've got light ones. I've got dark ones. And if I put a dark one in the middle and a light one on each end, and then if I put a dark one on each end and a light one in the middle, look oh, what I got. Look at that. From the same strips. Isn't that amazing? From the same strips. And then, if I put them together, look. I'd have a little checkerboard. And look how the chain, and look how it's starting to yeah. make a chain. Yeah, isn't that something? So because I have pressed, they lock together both sides. Now, on my four patch, I only needed one because it only locked on one side. But the nine patch... I'm going to make sure that that's over there. I don't want to do office work today. I want to go sew. Yeah, let's sew. Let's have a sew day. What's the weather supposed to be like? Let's close due to weather. <laughs> Too nice We out. don't do that very often. <laughs> no, but, yeah. we don't. We don't. But sometimes you need a play day. It's going to be our birthday uh, here in a few weeks. What actual day is that, Cappy? Um, the 27th of August is actually our official. Always in Stitches yeah, birthday. That's the day we, we opened. opened. That was our soft opening. We were actually in here in end of April, 1st of May, you know, getting it ready. Uh-huh. And how, um, how many years old are we? 14. Now, see, not very many quilt shops can say that anymore. Well... And we just keep getting bigger and better, it feels I know. like. Well, I mean, that's it's... because of the people's support. Yeah. The people coming in and supporting us is the reason that we are doing so good. Okay, now at this point, let me show you this. At this point, they're the same. See that? Yes, they now, are. Now, how do I change them up is by either putting a light one on one side or a dark one on the other side. So, I'm so now would you chain piece these typically or not? Yes, I would. If I was making a whole bunch, I'd just be putting them through the machine. Yeah. That's what chain piecing means. It means that you just chain piece them. So let me show you. <clears throat> When I pin, I don't start here. I start with the seam. Somebody asked me that the other day. How come my seams don't match up? Well, you start with the seams and you match the seams up. 
Okay, so can I just point out that your pins match your fabric today? And they, pin, and, and they match my pants. And they cushion, match your shirt. And they match my shirt. I'm so you. you are just all that I'm and zooming. the bag of chips. I'm I'm just grooving. You are. You're cool, man. I want to grow up to be you. Oh, isn't that sweet? Okay. Don't run over your pins. Yeah, your, our service man really doesn't like it. <laughs> Well, he should. It keeps him in business. I know, but <laughs> he doesn't like to see sad no, machines. No, he doesn't. How often should you get your uh, sew machine uh, serviced, Cappy? Well, we say once a year or every 300 hours if you're really running it hard. Uh -huh. So you figure 300 hours is 10 projects, uh -huh. um, you know. Roughly. So did you see how I just, I didn't cut between these? If I had 40 of these going, I would just keep going, keep going, keep going. And then I'd use my little cutter here that I love so much. And it's just one of those necklace things that you cut threads with. There's a little uh, razor blade, round razor blade in here. And when you just put your threads right in one of those notches, it just cuts it. It's so nice. It's the coolest thing. You know what else is a cool thing is this? I know. I love mine. I have a mini one. Have you seen the mini I one? I have. They're about this yes. big. They're adorable. And they come in so many cute I colors. Know. But, I mean, can you imagine all this stuff rolling around over here yes. on my desk? <laughs> Prior to having it, yes. Yeah. Like, look. This, this would roll. This would just roll everywhere. And uh, so, yeah, I love this thing. Got my screwdriver. Uh, my... Uh, Where's my seam ripper? It's back over here. Uh-oh, it escaped. It holds my seam ripper, you know, my pencils, my marking tools. I tell you what, I love this little gadget. I, I love do too. a good stocking stuffer. Yes, it would be. It's fun. I don't even know what they're called, but we've got them in all colors and all sizes. They're great. Okay, now... Now, which way are you pressing? I'm That's pressing open. Open, okay. And this is where I use my clapper. That if you don't have one, I'm sorry. We're go we're getting them. At the minute they come, uh, we will be putting it out. You know, we'll be shouting it from the rooftops. Well, we've got a waiting list already, and yeah. they will absolutely get them first. Yeah. And then, you know, we'll, we'll get them out to everybody as soon as we can. It's just one of those things. Just one of those things that happened when COVID came around. Everything kind of got backed up because people weren't able to work. We've been lucky here. Oh, these are so cute. And again, there's 101 things you can do with these. <laughs> Might even be 102. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Could very well be. Look. And look at how nice those come together because you locked those seams in. And when you go like this, no seams are opening up. I mean, it's perfectly and it lays beautifully flat. Okay, there so. There it is. There's the back. And it's just beautiful. And so. If I wanted to continue and I put four together, I'd have a nice little uh, checkerboard that mm -hmm. I could put in the middle of a star or a middle of a log cabin or just, I mean, there's so many things you can do with a nine patch. I know that was basic for today, but sometimes we need to go back to the basics. We forget that there are people that are just learning how to sew. You know, they don't teach that in home ec anymore. Do they even have home ec? Home we, economics anymore in the school? They, I don't think they call it home ec. They call it family sciences or something. And we've actually, it's been interesting. In the last probably five years, we've had several school systems contact us, and we've placed school, machines in the schools. Really? I well, that's good news. I think it's coming back. I think it's coming back. Oh, that's great news. So, yeah. I thought it had to be like a technical uh, course or something well, at the technical they school. they may call it that now, but, but yeah. we have... We have high schools in central Indiana. We've placed several of them. We've placed machines well, in. Well, that so. is wonderful. I don't think we have it in Anderson. I don't think that there's any uh, sewing or home economics or anything going on in Anderson at the schools. But anyway, if you need to learn how to sew, 
This is a good place to come. We're in Noblesville, Indiana. We're easy to find. Google us or uh, go look at our website. It'll tell you how to get here. And we would love to have you come and uh, sew with us. We've got a big sewing machine department. Uh, we have tons of sewing books all the way from advanced down to beginners. And um, we have some classes going on, a few we're, we're trying to build up, but you know, we're conscious of social distancing and all that that has to go on. So uh, bear with us. We try to do the best we can with the classes, but that's why the YouTube has been so successful. And uh, if you like us, why don't you subscribe to our channel? It's uh, fun. We don't just do at the sew machine. We have all kinds of things going on in mm -hmm. our YouTube uh, selection. And so check us out. And if you like this video, you can come back and see me next Monday. I'll have something else fun to show you. Talk to you then. Bye-bye.